Hello students, this is Dr. Faizan Mirza. We are discussing osmoregulation. Osmoregulation deals with how your body is capable of maintaining the osmotic pressure of your blood by retaining the right amount of water from the urinary filtrate. Now when we are talking about osmoregulation, we need to discuss the role of hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. Hypothalamus contain osmoreceptors and these osmoreceptors actually monitor the amount of water or you can say the solute potential or even osmotic pressure of your blood. The osmoreceptors of hypothalamus are fed this information from the baroreceptors from the heart that mean that are monitoring the blood pressure as well as the osmoreceptors which are actually present within the hypothalamus. So the blood is the, this hypothalamus region is receiving the information regarding the blood pressure as well as the water content of your blood. If the osmotic pressure is high, a high osmotic pressure means that there is low water in blood. Low water means there is a high solute concentration. In this case, this will stimulate the release of a hormone called ADH. ADH is antidiuretic hormone. This is synthesized in the hypothalamus but released from the pituitary. And with pituitary is involved here, posterior pituitary is involved for this process. This is the, uh, the pituitary gland and there's the hypothalamus associated with it. This is the cell that ends up making the, um, the ADH hormone. The ADH hormone enters into this uh, circulatory, uh, microcirculatory system which is present here, these capillaries, and they will take this uh, hormone into the blood and to the kidneys. So once the osmoreceptors are stimulated, the posterior pituitary gland then release the hormone ADH. ADH will enter the bloodstream and the circulatory system and it would get circulated to the kidneys. Once in the region of kidneys, it will stimulate the uptake of water by the collecting ducts. These are the epithelial cells of the collecting ducts, held together by tight junctions that prevent the free mixing of the tissue fluid and the filtrate. So here you can see that you can see I am drawing just uh, these are the capillary wall cells, and uh, this is the capillary passing right next to the collecting duct. This region is the blood vessel, this is ERP, the, the cell of your collecting duct, the epithelial cells of the collecting ducts. And uh, this is the blood capillary and this is the lumen on, uh, along which the filtrate is traveling in the collecting duct. And the flow of filtrate is in this direction. Essentially at this time, uh, the, these cells, these uh, uh, cells which are making the collecting duct, they have, you know, the, they are single cell lining and they have a basal surface and an apical surface. The apical surface faces the lumen where the filtrate is traveling and the basal surface faces the blood vessel and it's the tissue fluid is present here. As already discussed, tissue fluid and the blood and filtrate, these are not allowed to mingle, especially the filtrate and the tissue fluid, they do not mingle that way because of the tight junction. Collecting duct is, real, is actually impermeable to water. So if water is there in the filtrate, it will not get uh, like passed through this uh, apical surface. So the filtrate will just go out and collecting that will allow this uh, this flow, this filtrate to go out into the renal pelvis. Now, inside the collecting duct cells, there are already uh, certain vesicles which are storing aquaporin channels. So these are vesicles, and these vesicles are carrying. You can see this these these red red uh, marks which I have I have just mentioned here. I have drawn here. These are the aquaporin channels present on the phospholipid bilayer of this vesicle. This vesicle is as good as a Golgi vesicle, but a modified vesicle in which the product is not inside the vesicle but on its surface. These on the on the basal surface, there are the receptors of the hormone ADH. So ADH hormone travels in the blood and it comes into the bloodstream. It diffuses out of the capillary and it comes and interacts with its receptor on the basal surface. So once ADH binds to its receptor, once receptor occupancy is achieved here. This will signal or this will transmit the signal inside the cell. And once the signal is transmitted inside the cell, we see an enzyme become activated and the name of the enzyme is phosphorylase kinase. The activation of the phosphorylase kinase enzyme triggers this vesicle 
which was stored in the cytoplasm to move towards the apical surface and get fused with the membrane. As the vesicle fuses with the membrane, the aquaporin channels, they become incorporated into the apical surface. The incorporation of the aquaporin channels in the apical surface makes the collectin duct cells permeable to water. Water starts to enter by osmosis, where which, which essentially is just a diffusion of water molecules. So this uh, water molecules, they move and uh, from the collectin duct, the water keeps on moving into the blood. It goes into the blood and blood then takes this water away. So this is how uh, your osmoregulation pathway works. Here you can see how water just moves across the apical surface and enters into the cytoplasm of the collecting duct cells. In the presence of low ADH, collecting duct uh, is, uh, is impermeable to water. So all the filtrate will just allow to, to go out so you will have large amount of diluturium being produced. But if there is a high ADH concentration in blood, the collecting duct becomes permeable to water and low quantity of concentrated urine is produced. You can recall from the daily life examples if you have taken a large volume of water or if you are in a cold temperature environment or in winters or if you are sweating very less, in that case there is a low ADH in blood which stimulates the release of, uh, uh, which stimulates the uh, urine volume to become very large and dilute. Whereas on a hot day, uh, if you are taking low water and the person is suffering from dehydration or in summer the person is sweating too much there will be a high ADH concentration in blood to make sure that all the water which is lost through these processes is kind of retained in blood until you actually go and drink water that's it thank you so much